Welcome to Ranger Rob Has Your Back, a show that features your business, your services, your products. On Ranger Rob Has Your Back, you are the star. Let Ranger Rob be your advocate. Let's get started. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Ranger Rob Has Your Back, where you're the star. Today's interview is with Jace from The Shuffle, which is a one hour radio show that is awesome, just totally awesome. And he is syndicated on Good Talk Radio. And I'd really like you to meet him. Um, great young uh, adult that does a great, great show. So without further ado, let's interview Jace from The Shuffle. Hello guys, this is Ranger Rob from Ranger Rob Has Your Back. And today I have a good friend of mine, Jace from The Shuffle. And I bet you guys are wondering, what the heck is The Shuffle? So what is The Shuffle, Jace? Uh, the Shuffle is my way of entertainment. Um, I've used The Shuffle for the last year as just an hour-long music adventure. I would take word, phrases, thoughts, ideas, and put music to them. And kind of bring you out of whatever your whatever funk that you're stuck in, and say, "Listen, we'll go on a musical journey for an hour. If you say football, I'll find everything related to football. If you say whatever, I'll find music that's related to this topic, this theme, this idea, and I'll play it for an hour just to kind of say, "Listen, somebody's listening, somebody's paying attention to you, and I'm here to entertain you." Cool. Uh, so, as guys, a, if you didn't know, shuffle is a uh, I, is it always an hour? Do you always do an hour show? Just about an hour, right around 50 minutes. All right. So it's a music hour. Yeah. And, but you custom design it almost every show. And yeah. uh, so I can't really say you're like classic rock because I've listened to your show and one day it's classic rock. The next day it's like head, head banging. It's like, whoa, yeah. he was in the mood. <laughs> he was in the mood today. <laughs> That's me. And, uh, and uh, you like to th make themes in your show, too. So to tell people a little bit more about you, by the way, the Shuffle is a one-hour music show. Um, it is an internet radio, um, played on internet radio stations and FMs, right? Correct. And uh, so you also syndicate with us on Good Talk Radio. And uh, we've actually had you with us for a long, long time. And uh, you and I met in a funny way. We met before you had the shuffle and you were uh, working on a, a show called cop and crew. Is that correct? And crew in the morning. Yeah. It was a three hour long morning radio show. Yeah. That uh, was so fun. And I was remote for that as well. Yeah. I noticed that because the, the, the host, the, the, I guess the main center of the show was in Lake Grove, New York. And I was Skyping in from Delaware. Yeah. And you know, it's kind of one of the things that's interesting because I've ran shows like that too. I had a show called She Said, He Said, where we used remote people. And people don't really realize how hard it is to coordinate something like that every day. And so a lot of times you'll see shows like that start. They'll go for a, a while, but it's, it's, you have to imagine, uh, it's kind of like the Beatles. You wonder how they stayed together for 10 years. To get four people or to get whatever's on your crew coordinated every day to be on the schedule to do the thing you know people have a lot of personal stuff and so uh it can be really hard and normally a lot of times shows like that don't last a long time because it's so hard to have a team like that stay together which is only human um and so uh we had the same trouble with some of our shows where we went a whole season we called it like 25 episodes and then it was just getting too hard people had other things going on and other stuff like that and it tends to fade off but and cop and crew is kind of like that too you guys had a really cool show really cool people in fact some of your peoples were doing shows with us and just to coordinate that is amazingly hard sometimes isn't it yes it's extremely difficult it can be quite a, quite a headache sometimes but one of the greater part about it parts about it was that when when the show had started i had already had that open time where I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. So it worked out perfectly for me. And then we had additional people join and it worked perfectly for them wherever they were. And because life happens when you least expect it, 
the show kind of just faded away and it was like, all right, well, that's, that's that for the show. We ran for three or four years. Cop and crew? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize it went that long. Yeah, about three or four years the show went on for. Wow, and it was that was a long Monday time. Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And uh, similar to what I have here, I have a studio uh, in my apartment. He had a studio in his apartment, and he would remote into the Lake Grove studio and start the show and play weather and play news. And by the time he actually got into the studio at 8 o'clock, we just opened the mics and we went with it. Very cool. So uh, uh, now that I want to move back to the shuffle. So how long have you been doing the shuffle? Uh, for about three years now, because when I had initially started, yeah, when I had initially started with uh, the cop and crew team, I had just started putting together hour long shows. Oh, okay. Just, so I, I, I guess like, I, I thought it was shorter. Than, I thought you started that after the cop and crew. No, I had actually been doing it late nights, probably 10 to 11 or 11 to 12. Gotcha. Uh, uh, Monday through Friday, just to kind of have a voice and, and talk about my day. Oh, and gotcha. I actually had a live audience. I was doing it live. And then I realized I can do this so much better in a produced manner. I can put the shows together better. I can line the music up better. Because when I first started, I had none of this. I had no board, no microphone, nothing. I literally, there's a video game called Rock Band. And yeah. Rock Band has a, a microphone because you have one that's a drummer, one that's a guitarist, and one that's a singer. Yeah, was that your first mic? <laughs> that was my very first microphone. And then I realized I'm not going to hold the microphone for an hour. This is going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> so I, uh, I had had young children at the time. They were probably two, maybe two, one and two. And I found a baby formula can. And I stuck pins into the sides of it. And I wrapped <laughs> rubber bands all around it. That was a shock mountain. You know, that's, uh, that's one thing I talk about people starting podcasts and shows like that. And I always say, hey, guys, make do with what you got. You truly did that. <laughs> I did. I did. And before I even had the money or the, the know how to go get a, um, a, um, a mic stand, I went and I got a, uh, it was a phone mount. I went to Five Below and I got a phone mount. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a ball joint on the end that's supposed to hold your phone. Uh, and instead of holding my phone, I melted that ball joint down and I put a, a microphone holder on top of it and let it cool. <laughs> that's cool. And, you know, at um, the end of the day, I had a, a mic stand. And I, I um, actually what I kind of like when I do shows like this with people that have their own shows, uh, like I had Gene from my uh, Hamilton radio the other day and I've had Tom uh, Goley do a show with us. And what I like people that have their own shows kind of talk about how they got started and how they moved their way up. So one of the things that I like to bring up because I own a radio station is we get approached by people like you and other folks that say, I like to be syndicated and I'd like to have my show in Arizona. And I always say, well, that's fine. First of all, tell us what your show's about. I don't know how many people do that to me. I want to be syndicated on your show. Well, would you care to tell me what your show's about? <laughs> and then, then the next thing is you come back and go, okay, I, I, think, I, could, I think I like your show if I, if I listen to it. And I'll see that it runs for like an hour or 45 minutes or something. And I go, and, and, I'm, I'm, and I want you to respond to all this when I'm done. So I come back to the person. And I say, okay, I can fit you in for an hour every day on, uh, at 3 o'clock, and I can give you five runs for the weekdays, let's say. And it's got to be an hour. And then that's where the problem comes. They go, what? I just like to run my show when I want to run it. And it's like, well, wait a minute, you can't do that. No. It's like we need, when you start moving on to syndication, when you're starting to move on to radio stations, then you need to start complying a little bit. And I, I meet so many podcasters and DJs who go, I just do my thing and run as long as I want, but I want to be syndicated. Well, we have to come back and say, sorry, we can't take you. If you can't do an hour show or a half hour show or an hour and a half, whatever you want your show to be, you have to be that schedule every time. Have the, uh, so as a DJ yourself, is that something you had to, uh, develop into learning how to do 
Yes and no. So uh, a lot of the times what I find to be very beneficial is, uh, first off, I have a catalog of a ton of shows. I mean, I go as far back as, as my, my computer will allow, and then I'll dump all the files on my computer onto an external hard drive. So if there's something that I can't make or I can't, you know, hey, life is happening right now or whatever, I can send that uh, and it'll work in, in place of it. But yeah, I've, I've learned that if I record on a certain day and it's supposed to air later on that night, well, I have to change my schedule to move, a, move my recording back and move my show back so it can air at the right time. Yeah, so um, I, I, the other thing I've noticed with uh, folks is, is some people watch shows like yours and they see you guys doing shows and, and making your own radio hours and DJs and, or people are just doing a podcast and they all think, oh my gosh, you're just making tons of money and stuff. And what most people don't realize is a lot of folks will do these shows as a secondary thing as a hobby because there really sometimes is just not a lot of money in it. And so what I want to talk to you about a little bit is it's more of a devotion, more of a something in your heart, something that you, you do for an enjoyment. And I met so many people like you and others that will tell me it's a, almost like therapy. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. It is absolutely therapy for me. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought up money because a lot of people say that, oh, well, you play all these commercials, you must make a lot of money. N no, <laughs> no, man. Yeah. <laughs> when do you think I make a million dollars? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like, uh, it's like, uh, and when we do shows, we're constantly saying, "What could you?" We always have like donation buttons, or can you buy Ranger Rob poopy bags, or can you uh, do something, you know, to contribute? Because this stuff, you know, like for us, we spend money on licensing and and uh, software to maintain our radio stations. People have no ideas right off the top, right off the top. We're at 150 to 200 a month just in licensing and software. And, uh, and then folks like you, you're buying music because we have to own our own music. Then you got to make sure and play your stuff on places that have a licensing like us. We use Live 65. Um, so you, you have... People do podcasts don't have to deal with some of the same problems you have because we have to deal with copyrighted music and make sure our music is playing on stations that are legit and have licensing. And so like, like we do. Um, so yeah, I, I imagine what's some of the hurdles that you've had? You know, some of the hurdles that I've had is uh, having to monitor my language. <laughs> That, that seems to be, that seems to be my biggest, you know, my biggest issue is because, you know, I'll be talking about a, a news story or a newsy type of story and I'm playing something in the background and it's playing. I hear it in my head. I know you hear it as I'm talking over it. And I'm like this F and more, oop, whoop, you know, it just falls out of my mouth hole. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm like, Oh God, I got to edit that. So I have to make a little mental note while the next song is playing edit this point here and either I can reverse the audio or bleep it out or whatever, but there's, there's some things because you forget I'm doing this here. This is my setting. This is my castle, my domain, yeah. my, my habits, my whatever. So if I have a drink in my hand or if I have a, a, my vape in my hand or my phone sitting next to me, it's not that standard. Oh, you see all the stuff around you. Your boss is walking past you. No. So if I'm like, this guy's whatever, or I forget that the people that are listening do have different opinions. Yeah, I have that problem with vaping. Um, when I was doing a show regularly, and because I was a producer, I tend to be sitting on the sidelines more. And I'll be, and, but I'm still on camera, and I'll be sitting there vaping. And my wife would point out, you know, that looks really, really bad. And it's like, really tacky. he kind of like, rah, 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 okay, I won't do it anymore. Like, um, I've got a vape right now. I'm so tempted to use it because you vape too, but uh, I totally understand it. The other thing it comes across, for example, um, uh, the different platforms we use. For example, I did you and I did a show together uh, a couple days ago, and I thought it was really cute, and I thought I'd put it on the Ranger Rob channel on YouTube, which automatically I can tell you it won't be monetized because it's got copyrighted music in. So yeah. you've got to make these decisions like what platforms can you play on? And um, 
you suffer the consequences when it comes to copyright. You do. And so on my channel, it's not a strike or anything, but you can't monetize. And, and that's okay, because I just think it was such a great show. And okay. so uh, I made a, a video version of the interview you and I did together. Um, and of course, at the beginning of your show, you played my favorite song. And as soon as you played it, and I was listening to your show last night, I still get kind of teary eyed. There's something about the song on that, but that's what beautiful song. It, well, that, and the fact that you, pre, your presentation was awesome. So, um, so let's go into that a little bit. You know, uh, we always want to be a model and inspiration for other people. And so what have you learned over the last few years of being a DJ uh, show where you're pre uh, presenting music, what are some of the things that you have grown into or uh, changed or found out works the best for your listeners? So as of January, my show has changed. It used to be an hour long music experience. It was word, phrases, ideas, thoughts, whatever. You gave me something and I gave you something in return which was great. That was one dedicated listener that would listen to that entire show because I built this one show around you. Yeah. Now I've actually learned that. And one of my buddies, his name is Mike. And he said, if I wanted to listen to music, I would listen to Spotify. That's true. True. Or, or whatever streaming service that you have. If you want to listen to music, why would you pick my show over everything else? You wouldn't. So I decided I'm going to start learning other people through their music playlist. And that's why one of the questions that I asked you was give me a song that brings back a great memory or a sad memory, or even just a, 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 the earliest memory that you can remember because, you know, a lot of songs like ELO that you brought up. I remember that song. I, I remember a lot of ELO because of my mom. Yeah. My mother played a lot of, of that kind of stuff or my grandmother that would play the, the fifties and sixties. Or my great grandmother, who was a huge music person and still has records in her house, she played the 40s and the 50s. And it's like music is a huge part of everybody's life. And we never really look at the if you're angry, you're going to go to this particular song. You're not going to listen to the wheels on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or if you're in a great mood, you might listen to Top 40. You're not always going to go to grunge. Or if you are in a, uh, you know, stuck in traffic, you might want to hear something that's going to make you laugh. So I had that funny song that I played for you. Yeah. You know, we already have our set playlist of things that we go to. Why not share that experience with everybody else? Yeah. And we do, uh, now I have a radio show that you and I actually had some fun between our shows. And that's one of the reasons why I call my show Ranger Rob Rednecks Rule the World, because I want the <laughs> show to be ran by someone who you never know what he's going to say. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's kind of the same theory. You're much better. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a novice when it comes to you. Um, uh, your knowledge and music and things like that is just amazing. Um, but I realized that why would anybody want to listen to me if there wasn't something unique, like uh, between the breaks, like what's Ray Rob the redneck going to say between the breaks? I mean, because one show I'll be talking about the music and the next thing I'll be talking about is uh, farting, you know, because you know, <laughs> red, rednecks will talk about anything or beer and things like that. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I totally relate to what you're saying is because when I first started, I just play music. I'm going, why? and then it hit me. Why would anybody want to listen to this if there wasn't like little surprises in it? So, uh, uh, yeah. Well, thank you. And, and it's funny because, uh, I have a, a history of radio before Cop and Crew. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually a, a viewer of their show. I used to watch their show prior to me joining. Oh, cool. And, well, I was actually working in an FM radio station at the time. And at the time, what I would do is I would have it on my phone, have their little show up on my phone, watch them and do whatever I was doing in the FM studio. And I would communicate with Eric and, and them between you know, whatever I was doing, whatever they were doing. And he's like, Hey, you're really, you know, you have a lot to say. You have interesting things to say. Why don't you come join us? And, uh, that's, that's how that whole thing started. Very cool. I was actually working in an FM radio studio at the time. 
And uh, Eric and all those folks are um, well, just a, a really kind person, and he's really a good radio. Uh, he's got a great radio voice and personality. Nice. And uh, it's a shame. I mean, I, I hope he gets a structured show like that again because we work with him in a heartbeat. And I, I, one thing I always remember about you guys, and I still curse you to this day, when you guys were on Cop and Crew, and then I'd started, and then I started to syndicate you, and then Eric would have fun, like, "Oh, we got that Mesa radio station over there," and he'd get it all mixed up. Hey, and uh, he used to make a lot of jokes about Mormons. But he's like, "This, <laughs> this is the wrong state, Eric." But the other part is, you guys called me on my birthday, which is like December twenty-first, and. Y- what people don't realize is there's a three hour difference between us. So call me up. I'd be like sitting in my jammies in a bathrobe half asleep. And and I have to call you guys back because you have me live on the air. And it's like really put me on the spot. And I'm sitting here. Oh, oh," just kind of clearing my throat and rubbing my eyes. It's like, you guys, happy birthday. And it's like, are you kidding me? Shut up you jerks. Oh yeah. And and it was uh, seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we did that. Yeah, it was like yeah, six or seven in the morning. Uh, so it, actually, call me and put me live on the air. <laughs> we were notorious for doing that. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I was, and that's really kind of got my interest up too. And gosh, I should do some shows like that. But of course, when we had Cop and Crew, you guys filled our morning shows. Then as times change, you know, and things change, they just do. do. Um, it's like, I need morning shows. It's like, well, why don't I do my own? That's where mine came along. And then I have you handle most of my evening stuff. Um, and then uh, when I don't use a DJ at all, I actually don't. I will just play music in our regular hours. Um, I really, it's only DJs I have is you and I. Um, I'm getting to a point I'm getting a little picky. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> Long as I think I just expanded you to six days now. Yeah. I think I got you on Saturdays and I got you pretty much through the week now. And you have the entire catalog. So, oh that man, that's what, yeah, you're taking up all my space on my, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Station. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, not at all. Oh, <laughs> well, mine's too. I mean, I got all my shows on there and I got all your shows. And because our shows, um, um, uh, play so much you do a weekly show but if i'm playing you every day we're playing older episodes which are all relevant and so uh um we have to keep big catalogs on you and myself yeah well you'll notice that i might do a particular special i might do like a a thanksgiving special yeah actually uh, i'll plug those in during those and then as the seasons go by those are the ones i will delete yeah after the seasons it's funny though because I I do do seasonal shows. I think I've done two birthday shows for me. Uh, I think I've done like two <laughs> Thanksgiving shows. I've done two or three Christmas episodes, and it's funny because I don't play your typical Christmas music either. I play all anti Christmas music. <laughs> the other thing I I actually heard one of your shows. Um, I I actually did a show the other day of all the people that do the version of uh, uh. Oh no, I just went blank. Um it's a Mexican song. Um At least not we Latino. Um Macarena? No. Everybody uh, got into doing that one song uh Despacito? Something like that. Anyway, there, there's like five different bands that did it and they all sound good. And so uh, uh anyway, so I just like I'm going to do a whole show with the different versions of the same song. <laughs> There you go. I'm yeah, that was kind of cool. It came out really good. And and I think I, I love doing shows like that because in, in the show that you and I had done together. Oh, that was fun. You had mentioned Nickelback. Yeah. You, you're a fan of one of the songs that they have. And I brought it to your attention that Nickelback has that song, Burn It to the Ground. Yeah. And there's a Norwegian rock band named Volbeat. And they are a huge band here in the United States. And they have a song called The Devil's Bleeding Crown. And they sound exactly the same. Yeah, and you played it for me too, and I was like, it was amazing. And you did play on your show that you and I did. You played my uh, Nickelback song, which I I just because I come from the seventies, I like a little disco. And Nickelback does this one song. Um, uh, she keeps me up. She keeps me up. Um, sounds like a disco song, which was totally out of their normal playlist. 
and it's actually a really cool song. In fact, yes. our puppets, the turds, actually we do a, a show, uh, do a lip sync or a puppet show. The, the turds actually do that song. And it came out great. I got to see that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's been, um, uh, it's really fun because I've watched your show develop and grow. And then uh, when you called me up the other day and said, well, I'm doing themes and interviews and then relating it to music. Um, it was really fun to watch the process you used to do that. So he, he, uh, Jay's literally interviewed me and, and <laughs> the problem is you and I talk a lot. So it was longer than normal. <laughs> And he would just uniquely ask me music questions that pertain to um, growing up or what my favorites were or what albums I listened to. And of course, I'm a different generation. And um, so as he does the interview, he'll integrate it with your show, the show, and then plug in that, that music into it. And it was really, it was a fun show to listen to. I, I listened to every minute second of it. It was a great show. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, and so uh, uh, you can catch, by the way, Jace is on Good Talk Radio. And uh, feel free to uh, go to goodtalkradio.com, go to the schedule, and find out when you need to stop everything and listen to the shuffle. <laughs> I mean, just stop everything. Stop. Leave work. Leave whatever you're doing. Let the kids just play outside forever, whatever. Shut down everything and listen to the shuffle. It's that important. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. No problem. It's a great show. You do a great well, it, job. It's a lot of fun for me to to listen to people's life through music. Of course, words are important to me as well. Oh, I remember I I grew up here or or whatever was a part of my life growing up. And it was so important to me to say, look, man, tell me your story. But a lot of people can't just listen to people talking for a period of time. Yeah. I noticed that to. with talk shows. That's you why we break to. up our talk shows. You have to. I mean, I can't sit here and do an hour long, just talking show. It's <laughs> never going to work for me, which yeah, is funny. Really, I, now I do just talking shows, but I have to, I mean, I'm usually doing reporting and pulling stuff in, but, um, the, but I totally relate to that. It's like on good talk radio. I try not to book Show, uh, podcast after podcast after show after talk show political show back to back to back to back it's just want 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 <laughs> and, uh, it'll, i mean i swear it'll kill you sometimes oh yeah so i we plug in music all over the place or special shows like yours just to break it up you know and just um give people a break for god's sakes go to the bathroom <laughs> Something. Right. right go to the bathroom or or you know hear local information or local news of what's going on that that is important to me i do and by the way i i do need to get you one of these see if i can get this camera to show it get you one of these you ranger up tub. yeah we're using this funny software um that puts a background on me but it's making things do weird things <laughs> but uh you and i this is actually a software you introduced to me i've known it's been around but i've never used it for an interview so this is actually the first and it's called Zoom. And a lot of people go, yeah, it's been around forever. Yeah. But, uh, typically, folks like us will use Skype to pull it into our software. And so this is a new experiment for us. So I'm hoping everything plays out really well. And I hope, love to, by the way, for people listening to the show, leave comments below and tell us, tell me if you like this format. And uh, um, yeah, we'd love to hear your feedback uh, as opposed to what we've been doing with our other software. But um, anyway, so... If you had the opportunity to be on a soapbox, <laughs> like you are all the time anyway, like we are all, <laughs> what message would you pass out to people that are thinking about doing what you're doing? And what message would you put out there for folks that listen to people like you? Um, what could we do to support you better? Man, listen, at the end of the day, I just want you to have some fun because that's what I do. I'm not here to make a lot of money. As we talked about earlier, money is, is never going to be the top reason why I do this. And if it is, it's time to get out. Yeah, that's for sure. Right. Because if you're just in it for the money, you're not putting out quality. 
if you're putting out quality, you're enjoying what you're doing and the money will follow. And I, I've always thought that that was so cheesy and so like, ugh, whatever, you know, you're just saying the typical thing. But again, man, listen, I, 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 I have a full-time job myself. Uh, I do what I do because I really do enjoy what I do. Um, at the end of the day, I just, I enjoy what I do and I want you to enjoy it too. And, uh, you know, if if talking is your thing or if storytelling is your thing, great. Tell that story. Share that story. Share the feeling. Share the emotion. It doesn't just have to be it doesn't just have to be a, a music show. It doesn't just have to be a news show. It doesn't just have to be a, a storytelling show. Just let you know, use it use it as a, as an audio diary, if you will. Yeah. And if you feel comfortable with people listening to it, by all means let them listen. You know, if it's just something that you want to put down so it gets out of your mind for a while and then come back to it, do it. You will eventually hear the good parts, the bad parts, the things that you probably don't want to share. You'll learn when you need to start editing things out. You'll learn, Hey, this is probably just a little too much for the public to, to really need to know. And that is your quality. Yeah. So before I forget, can you, I know it's a long list. Can you give a folks, uh, now it's taking you a while. You've worked your way up to the ranks. Yeah. How yeah. many platforms are you on now with the shuffle? Uh, well, of course, good talk radio. Uh, make sure I add that to the top of the list, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that goes on the top. <laughs> iTunes, anchor, Google podcast, Spotify, pod knife, swoot, play a pod, bullhorn, podcast, Republic, pod news, blurberry, chartable, listen notes, stitcher, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Overcast, Breaker, and of course my website, my Facebook page. Sweet. And uh, iHeartRadio. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, awesome. Have you, uh, do you use, uh, why well, I guess you can. Uh, have you put your stuff on Spreaker? Uh, it's been on Spreaker and then I took it off. Mm. And then I decided to just recently put it back up there uh, for one particular person who listens where you would least expect them to be able to listen. Yeah. Is yeah. able to listen to my show. So they listen and they hear all the shows and just by him listening and make it, make a penny or two. Yeah. 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 I think it's kind of funny that everybody has a little, I'm going to say kind of quirk of how they like to listen to our radio shows. Um, some of them will do it from their cell phone. Some will do it from their PC. Some will do it from their Alexa. Some will do it. At you know, work, speak, you know, speaking of the Alexa, did you hear the intro to your show? Yes, I did. That was interesting. Um, so I have to ask, uh, I'll, I'll have to ask later how you did that, but uh, can I, I can I just cute. play it here? Sure. Hey, Alexa, you ready for the spotlight? You know what, Jason? Let's hope I don't get up this time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are now listening to Jace, the producer, presents The Shuffle. And I've learned that you can set these little things up. And I've now learned how to use the technology that we all have to work for me. Sweet. Yeah, now I use, you know, we use, uh, I actually use, I have, believe it or not, five Alexas or Echoes in my house. <laughs> including outside the, will you see me kicking my feet up watching the pool? There's an Alexa out there. I can listen to anything I want. And uh, uh, I just love Alexa, but I've never used it too heavily into my shows. And so when we're off air and stuff, one of these days I'll have, have to show, show me that little trick. I've even got her and I just recently took it off my phone, so it's not going to be there, but I've recently used her to criticize me during my show and to be a critic, a live critic. That's funny. Uh, I was interviewing a buddy of mine because he has a, he has a, a stream on YouTube that he does. And he was trying to say, call KFC. And the Alexa thought he was trying to say, call the KKK. Oh no. Yeah. So it turned into this huge, Alexa, shut up. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> He's freaking out. So I brought it up during the show that I did with him. And I'm like, man, what the hell happened with your Alexa? So we keep saying it back and forth. And then I'm like, well, you have to remember, I have kids, okay? I have a seven-year-old boy and an eight-year-old girl. And they love talking to this thing. So my daughter will say things like, Alexa, tell me about the moon. Alexa, tell me about the stars. Alexa, tell me about this book. And uh, 
Yeah, there, there he goes, right there. That's all right. Bye, Hi, Club. Hi, Michael. Tristan. <laughs> you call him Michael? Is that what? He, what did you say? What's his name? Tristan. Kristen. I thought you said Michael for some reason. Tristan. T R Y. Ah. Sorry about that. And uh, so you know, we're talking about tell me about the moon, tell me about the stars, tell me about this, tell me about that, and then and then my son will ask a question like, "Hey, Alexa, I farted." <laughs> yeah. You can go back and see who asked the question. So I'm talking about this on his show. And then I have Alexa come through and criticize me. Neither one of you are funny. Now stop calling my name. <laughs> That's great. I have to, you have to, we'll have to get together and, and see how you've been playing with that. So it's a great Absolutely. tool. It's, it's a great tool. And it works great with radio stations. And yeah, yeah. She integrates with all your stuff. Yeah. Well, hey, I need to wrap this up. We don't want, uh, you know, people, uh, I get these long interviews. I could talk to you forever. And, and other people are going, gosh, you're just off on a tangent there. <laughs> but uh, um, just want to remind everybody, uh, the show, his show is called The Shuffle. And uh, I'm sure in the future, you'll probably have other things going on. But uh, pay attention to Jace. He's going to get rich and famous someday. <laughs> Not while I'm married, I won't. <laughs> I hear you. Oh, no, and that's one thing I want to, before I do go, is you have to have, and I, I want to bring this up because I have to have it too. We have to have strong and understanding spouses. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, yes. My, uh, my wife has kind of gotten used to me running off to my little hidey hole mm -hmm. and, and playing with my toys for an hour or two in a day. Yep. I go and, through the same thing. And she said, you know what, as long as he's not bothering me, I'm not going to bother him. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know, they, just like your, your, uh, your son just came through there. Every once in a while, my door will open up in the back behind me, and it will be my dog. <laughs> uh -huh. Or sometimes my wife is like, peek in and say, oh, he's still recording, and she'll Mine's wait. But... In the bed. <laughs> She's right over there. She always just watches me. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I get, Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I uh, should wrap this up. Oh man, anytime. Um, once again, guys, this show is called The Shuffle. It's a variety of music based on the theme and whatever you're talking about at the time. And it could actually be themed by whoever you're interviewing, which yes. I just witnessed. And it was a, a wonderful show. And he plays great music, and but he's also not predictable. And that's nice too. So I urge <laughs> so, you... If you've New never story. heard the shuffle before, um, either click on the links that we have down in the description below or go to Good Talk Radio, check out our schedule and see what times he plays. And you can always count on his show being good. And uh, New shows are posted every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when they should start hitting all the syndicate points. Cool. Sounds good. Well, guys, and... Uh, I want it um, well, I, for you. I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your life there to interview with us. Um, this was thank actually kind of a new program we started called Ranger Rob Has Your Back, designed to interview folks like you that are doing these wonderful things. And uh, you know, I mean, there's always a celebrity. I, I, I always meet these people who think it's so cool to interview celebrities or all that stuff. And it's like, that's, a, that's not what interests me. <laughs> I want to, I want to hear real people and you are truly Normal a real everyday person doing something you love. And that's really cool. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. It does mean a lot that it's being recognized as at least something entertaining. Mm -hmm. Cause that's all I want to do at the end of the day. Just, just want to entertain people and uh, help them get out of, you know, the normal nine to five grind or whatever your shift is. And at least for an hour, yeah, mine can be somewhere else here and a couple of people have some fun and uh, playing some good music while you do it. Very so cool. thank you. And thank you for having me again. You bet. Well, hey guys, we're going to move on and uh, thanks again. And uh, I highly recommend once again, go to good talk radio, check out the schedule, listen to the shuffle. So thanks again. Bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.